There are five great secrets. The secret of death is one among those five. We never question what happens after life. What is death? After that, where do we go? What does one experience during death? It's like changing your clothes, moving from one room to another room. After human life, there are many realms. So then, why do they come back to life? To become free, it has to come back. Is it possible to choose the time of death? Oh, yeah, yeah. If you are a good yogi, you can do that. If you know life thoroughly, you know death. If you know death, you know what life is. Gurudev, what does one experience during death and what is the journey after that like? Now, why do you want to know everything right away? You will one day definitely know. <laughs> but the curiosity about death will also bring curiosity about life. And to understand life, you need to know death. You need to understand death, you need to know life. Death only indicates that life is eternal. It's like changing your clothes, moving from one room to another room. After death experience is not an uncommon thing. You have many scientific evidences on this also. Millions of people have gone to the border, have had a near death experience and they have come back. They have shared. Right? But it's good to have that curiosity. What's after death? This very question gives a, a bigger dimension to our life. It expands our awareness, makes us think much bigger than day-to-day -day events and uh, the circumstances that we face in life. Gurudev, we talk about soul. What is the soul, Gurudev? Is it a wave function, a tattva? Where is it? How big is it? The consciousness, which is all pervading, which is like the wave function, like the radio waves, which is everywhere. But it has certain attributes to it. Then it becomes a soul. What are they? Icha. There is a desire. Dvesh. Dislikes. Aversions. Sukha. Happiness. Every soul experiences happiness. Dukkha. Unhappiness. Sanghata. Meeting. Uniting. Merging. Chetana. It is conscious. And Dhriti. Dhriti cannot be translated into English. Dhriti is that force which upholds the consciousness. So these seven aspects together give the name soul or a life force. And it is the same whether for elephant or for an ant. <laughs> Here measurements fail. You can't say an uh, elephant has a bigger soul than an ant has a smaller soul. The only difference is it is expressing itself a little more in as it moves from an ant to an elephant to a human being. Its expression has blossomed. Say suppose if it is in a bud shape in an ant, it's little blossomed in elephant and it becomes fully blossomed in human being. You can also say like paddy and then rice and then puffed rice. <laughs> but it's the same stuff. Gurudev, are there any other realms than the physical that the soul visits? Of course, there are many realms. Brain is only attuned to a particular bandwidth, that's all. So we are able to perceive only a certain bandwidth of the whole range of existence that we are. See, your eyes can only see to some level, but a cat can see even more than you. Owl can see more than that. So their bandwidth is higher. So the concept of creation as per our cognition, our perceptual ability is very limited. 
what we cannot perceive from our five senses do exist and we cannot deny they don't exist and so there are realms see after human life this self leaves this body and becomes pratatma and then from pratatma then it becomes pitru there is a difference there also then pitru then they move on to higher realms gurudev does the soul continue to evolve even between lifetimes does it continue to drop impressions or does it have to take a human birth to evolve it has to take human birth human birth is to evolve because impressions goes with the soul and they keep manifesting within that realm like in dream see suppose you are laughing in the whole day in the dream also you start laughing i want to experience this see your practical experience if you are crying in the day time in the dream also you start crying if you are happy i want to have dreams where you are happy <laughs> that's why human birth is very very important so when the soul leaves this body it remains in different realms but to become free it has to come back gurudev what are the different ways in which the soul leaves the body are some ways better than the other and do we have a choice on how we want to leave you soul leaves from the body sometimes through the eyes sometimes through the mouth you will see some people's eyes roll and they leave through the eye sometimes it goes through the ears mouth it can leave through anal region also and also through the toes and for yogis dhyanis it goes through the brahmarandra top of the head and can we choose gurudev <laughs> yeah yeah if we keep our mind free from craving aversions agitations and uh, hatred then we go more sattvic we move up rajasic it moves through different and tamasic through the anal region gurudev uh, the way we breathe impacts our life does the breath also impact death and what happens after that breathing assumes its own rhythms and cycle when the soul is leaving the body so according to one's karma the nadi starts working the soul leaves through the left nostril or it goes through the right nostril when it exits through the right nostril uh, then it is free it goes with the knowledge it is more aware that is wisdom But if it is going through the left side then it is going with certain intentions and emotions so it is going to come back and it is connected in life also if you see when the right nostril is functioning you will find there is more left brain activity and so you are more alert you are conscious and you are logical but when the left is functioning then your right brain is more active that means you are more emotional and you have intentions to do something you have plans <laughs> so when you have plans you have to come back soon when both are functioning that is sushumna nadi then that is samadhi when you exit in meditative state then you have no obligation you don't have to come back you are you are merging with the infinite instantaneously even if you have to come back it is by a grand plan for the sake of others not for your own sake yeah. gurudev bhishma chose when to die is it possible to choose the time of death oh yeah yeah if you are a good yogi you can do that <laughs> and how does the time of death affect the next life it's all connected to karma that's why it said um, like the time of birth is important to make one's chart and to get a, a overall view about what one's life would be the time of death also has a meaning हम लोग कहते हैं ना उसको पंचक लग गया द लास्ट फाइव स्टार्स ऑफ द जोडाइक 
you know, Dhanishta, Shatapisha, Purva Bada, Uttra Bada, Revati. These are the last five stars. When a soul leaves at that particular time, when these five stars are there, it is said that soul is still very earthbound. It doesn't quickly move on. Like there is a season to sow the seed, only then the seeds will sprout. In the same way, certain days when the soul leaves the body, it, it remains earthbound for six months time. It still lingers around that place, it gets attached to that place. So that is why Panchakla Gyavartha you know. That is one belief also. So you don't have to worry on that. Gurudev, some people believe that uh, if they leave beyond the age of 84, they, they're not reborn again. Is that true? <laughs> age does not count there at all. Some can remain frustrated even beyond 84, 85. You can see. People who are 85, 86, or even 90, they look so sad and they look so dull and they are carrying so many cravings, aversions, sadness, disappointment in their mind. See, mind doesn't age, my dear. Body ages. That's why people feel that they have not aged, though their body is aging. There's something in them that makes them feel, I'm not aged. This mind which takes the impressions, People who are beyond 80 and all, they get so addicted to pornography. Their body is dysfunctional, but their mind is craving for all those impressions. What impressions they have? You can see people at old age cribbing and being negative, and you can say they will be not reborn. Who says that? People who pass certain age, if they are not in the spiritual realm, or if they are not, cultivated a broad mindset, they can still sit and crib. Anybody who cribs will have to come back. Gurudev, when a person dies, the soul is reborn. Then why do we do Shraad? How does Shraad help the soul that has already reborn? No, Shraad is for yourself. Shraad means Shraddha, that which is done with Shraddha, means with faith. Your sense of gratefulness, your sense of acknowledging their contribution to you definitely creates certain vibrations which goes beyond this realm. Like prayer goes beyond this realm, the material realm, the physical realm. Similarly, faith, gratitude, acknowledging somebody and wisdom, they all transcend this physical plane. In that sense, it reaches them. So the custom is you feed the poor people. When a hunger is satisfied, when a desire is fulfilled, there is a sense of gratefulness, of blessing. Those vibes are what is more important. To give someone who need whatever, not forcefully, in the name of rituals, you know, we keep on feeding those people who are already overfed or overweight. That will not work. Only the feeling that matters, sense of happiness, fulfillment, all these positive feelings emit vibes, and these vibes surpass the material realm. They reach into the subtle realms is what makes these things meaningful. Without feeling, without that sense of gratitude, you just do some ritual, they don't have much meaning. That which is done with Shraddha is Shraddha. That conveys that feelings to people on the other side as well. The Garud Puran very vividly describes some fearful events that occur after death. Is this in fact the journey of the soul and is this journey different with or without a Guru? When you have a Guru, it's a different journey. <laughs> Even that is said in the Puranas. Because you are connected to a lineage, a guru, and you are moving at the speed of a light. You are moving very fast. Yes, in other uh, things, in Garuda Puran, it is said after the soul leaves, it lingers on as Preta Yoni for 10 days. Because the transition is so big that it gets so confused. 
Now the body it has dropped, it doesn't want to go back to the body because it looks like an excretion. The body doesn't feel like something that one wants to get into. But one is not used to the other side. This is called Pretyoni. They, they, they are in between now. And then after some time it gets used to this in between stage, then it moves on. This is where the knowledge helps. When someone dies, the son or daughter, the priest, they say, you are not the body, you are not the mind, you are not your intellect. Move beyond this. Let this earth element absorb the earth element in your body. Let the water in your body go to the water. Let the fire element engulf this entire thing. So, we merge our body back into the nature. Till now it is holding, this is me. Now it says, no, I am not this. What am I? Who am I? This awareness starts happening. And so he said, holding the tail of a cow, the soul crosses the river Vaitarani. But what is cow? Gau in Sanskrit means knowledge, it means movement, it means liberation, and it means cow also. <laughs> so, even the tail of a knowledge, even a little bit of knowledge, if you hold on to, you can cross oceans. The ocean may be very big, but a small life jacket is good enough for you to float. This is the knowledge that uh, the children give to the parents or um, diseased people. It's called tarpan. All that you see in the world is equivalent to a sesame seed. It's nothing, not much significant. Like the sesame seed, drop all your desires. Whatever incomplete missions you had in your life, leave it to us, we will take care of it. You be satisfied, move on. So this encouragement by the near and dear one, even relatives, everybody, they all do tarpan. Tarpan means be fulfilled, move on. So as a symbol, they take little sesame seeds, and then tripyatam, tripyatam, tripyatam. Be fulfilled, be fulfilled. After 10 days they do this. One understands from this in-between stage of Pratyoni, they have moved on to Pitraloka. And you can join them with your grandfather, your grandmother, and the previous your ancestral lineage. Tell them they are there and they are waiting for you, they have received you. <laughs> that is what is Rishrat is all about. That is why it is a celebration. After the 10 days, 12 days, 13 days, these rituals are made like that. So that no more crying and no more sadness, but now on you should celebrate. Gurudev, we have heard that the last few seconds before death decides what happens to the person after death, irrespective of how they've lived their lives. Is this true? And also, is there an ideal way to die so that we are not born again? <laughs> <laughs> there are instances in the Puranas, they say a person in the last minute before his death, he started calling Narayan, Narayan, though it was his son's name, and uh, he got liberated. But those are exceptions. The last minute, only those impressions will come which you have been nurturing the whole life. You cannot create a last minute impression. <laughs> <laughs> last minute only the impression will show up whatever has been there. Yes, of course, the strongest of the impressions will prevail. And that's why Sri Krishna also in Gita he said, keep me in your mind all the time. So you make my impression very strong so that you will attain me only, you will get liberated. That means to whatever you have been practicing and those practices will obviously will be your strongest impression. Because impressions are already there. They simply surface, they pop up. You cannot try to have a different impression in the last minute. So clear the mind of all the impressions and then keep it hollow and empty, keep it free. And that is meditation. People who are regular meditators, 
you will find automatically the last moment the meditative mind just uh, takes over. Gurudev, it is said that if we die in a place like Kashi, we get liberated. Is this true? <laughs> Kashi is not a physical place. Kashi is where knowledge is, where the Shushumna. This is called Kashi. The third eye place is Kashi. This is Ganga, Jamuna, Saraswati, all three. Prayagra. This is also called Prayagra. This is also uh, called Kashi. So, when someone's attention is in the third eye, that is in Sushumna Nadi, when that is opening and you die, then you are liberated. That's what it is. Not just go to Kashi, die there. Why Kashi is called Kashi like that? Kashi was a seat of wisdom. And so, there were scholars. And every lane, the discussion was only on Brahman, only on the infinity. This discussion of Vedanta, Ved, was so prevalent in Kashi. So there was no craving, no aversion, no yelling, no shouting. So even anybody comes into such a Sangha, they would feel elevated. But wow, today it is different. And you don't have to see that only one place is seat of wisdom. Someone passes away in Prayagraj, this is Mukti. Say, if someone leaves their body in Haridwar, that is also Mukti. You go to Himachal Pradesh, there is a place called Mukti Dham. And there is a place called Mukti Dham even in Nepal. And people go there, they get Mukti there. So similarly, Badrinath. Lord Krishna didn't tell Uddhav, you go and die in Kashi. <laughs> he told him, I am going, you also go to Badrinath. Adi Shankara went to Kedarnath, otherwise he would have left the body in Kashi. He went to Kedarnath, he left the body there. Maharshi Patanjali left his body in Rameshwaram. And Kerala, that is called Parashurama Kshetra. Different places when you leave body, say, you will attain Mukti when you leave body here. So. These are all beliefs you cannot attach too much importance. Even dogs are dying in Kashi. <laughs> Doesn't mean they are getting liberated. <laughs> Buffaloes are dying in Kashi. <laughs> Kashi means when you are fully aware, the third eye point, where the Sushumna Nadi is awake in you, is, is active. At that time when you leave, you are liberated. Gurudev, is it true that the soul can choose the family in which it is born? And if so, what drives that choice? Sanskaras. A soul picks up this person, this person. Sanskaras, karmas. You can't even say it chooses them. It, is, it just comes into that body. It is no choice. If you have bought a ticket to go to Pune, then you have to board that particular plane which goes to Pune. So if you bought a ticket to go to Kolhapur and it's a train ticket, you have to go to the train. You can't take that ticket and go somewhere else and sit in somewhere. They won't even let you go. Like that. Gurudev, uh, when someone commits suicide, what happens to the soul? It's like someone feeling very cold and they're removing their jackets. They feel even more cold. That's why I say it's the most foolish thing one does. And it takes long time for that spirit to um, understand and come out of the regret. Because it has left the body, but it, it couldn't leave away all those garbage it is carrying with it. All the misery and all the um, suffering and pain. It has not gone. I thought by leaving the body, it will be free from all that. So it is not. It's like jumping from the pan to the fire. That's what they feel. But over a period of time, they get relief out of it. That's why the prayers and meditations and satsangs, group meditation, all this will bring a cooler breeze to people on the other side. 
Gurudev, what is the significance of the last rite rituals like tying the toes or pouring water on the face, uh, putting rice in the mouth of the departed ones? See, there are ten nadis in our body. Ida, Pingala, Sushumna, and then Kurma, Dhananjaya, Krikala, all these nadis are there. And they are all connected to different parts of the body. Yawning is connected to certain nadis. Like that uh, twitching of the eyes are connected to Krikala. And then um, burping is also connected to the nadi. Now, when the causal body leaves, the subtle body is still there. The nadis are functioning a little bit. Gross body, of course, there could be some warmth. And it takes some time for the body to become cold. The Dhananjay nadi runs through both the toes. So they tie the toes together so that the Dhananjay nadi is balanced. So the Vayu Tattva escapes through the feet. Otherwise what would happen is Dhananjay nadi imbalance can bloat the stomach. And they say there is a possibility of people's stomach bursting. This is what the ancient people have seen. Interestingly, for sannyasis, you make them sit in Padmasana. Enlightened people, you know, the, the pranavayu is escaping through Brahmarandra already. So sannyasis, their toes are not tied. They are made to sit in Padmasana. And five elements are given sanskara to the body, because the body is made up of five elements. So rice is a symbol of earth element. So first you put rice and then you put water, water element. You give them a bath. The water which is sanctified with chants. Then you pour the water energized with the mantras on the body. Or Ganga Jal. When a child is born, the first thing we do is bathe the child. So the last thing we do when the body is being disposed away is to bathe it and see it off with dignity. Then you take to the Agni Sanskar, the fire element. All the five elements are invoked so that the body can merge back into those five elements. These are the things that people knew from long time. Being aware of what is happening with the gross, subtle and the causal. So pouring water is not some shock treatment or anything. <laughs> thing. You don't need to shock a dead body. <laughs> Gurudev, why is that in some cultures they cremate their dead? I think it is a very good practice. Number one, just imagine billions of people on the planet if everybody uh, occupies so much of space. Second is uh, the five elements should merge back into the five elements. See, nature does like that. When the animals die, other animals will come and they just make sure that nothing remains. It's only humans, we put the bodies in the coffins, we store it. We make a symbol sign on top of it. But how many you can do like that? From, the, from an environmental point of view, the ancient people from many cultures, they knew this is the best way to save the nature. Indeed, can spirits possess any person? And if yes, can devas and higher spirits also possess people? Possessing is a very tough word. I would say spirits can be channeled through people. Devas do channel. Very weak mind, weak spirit feel that they have been possessed by some entities. They simply have to realize they are much stronger than these feelings and emotions, vibrations that come to them. But one is in any path, one who is doing meditation or this, no spirit can come close to them because the spirit is very strong. Gurudev, there is no experience or knowledge of death while we are alive. Is it possible to have that experience while we are alive so the fear of death goes away? You do experience when you are in deep love that you are not the body. When you are in deep meditation, you experience I am not the body. I am not the body at all. So, Sudarshan Kriya, when you do it, what do you feel? 
you feel you are not the body or consciousness. These experiences are there. And these things will take away the fear to a great extent. A little string of fear, when nature feels it is needed in you, it will keep it. That's why it's called Abhini Vesha. A little bit of Lesha Avidya, a little bit of Avidya means little bit of ignorance and little bit of fear. Nature would keep, because fear is like that shell, that membrane around the seed. That membrane leaves when the seed is sprouting. But till then it protects the seed, correct? In the same way, a, a child is induced with little fear so that it goes here and there and runs back to mother. Suppose it has no fear and it will go away anywhere. Because that fear brings the child back to the mother. In the same way, uh, nature keeps certain fear here, there. Meditation and wisdom, jnana, dhyana and jnana are the way to overcome them. Gurudev, is it possible to bring the dead back to life? Well, <laughs> <laughs> there are instances where people have come back to life. Near-death experience is what we say. Clinically, people were dead and then they have come back. There are so many such cases that has happened. But there is nothing like somebody is dead and you are buried them and then you do some mantra, tantra and bring their life back. Just don't believe in these sort of things. As far as I am concerned, I think such things we should not uh, even keep in mind. I know about a Sant who has passed away, he said, I'll come back. And they're keeping their body in freezer for years together. And they believe that the saint is going to come back. He may come back, why would he choose the same body which is so old? <laughs> it's all spreading ignorance. How did Savitri bring back her husband's? It is the same thing like a near-death experience. People clinically dead and they wake up get into a state of uh, suspended animation for some time and then they wake up. This happens, but it's not by someone's effort that they do some mantra and tantra and they try to bring their body back. If they do it, it is only through some other spirit, not the same person, I tell you. You can invoke some spirit and put it in the body, but those things doesn't work too long. I think it's an area which is worth avoiding. <laughs> there are many people who have had near-death experience, they describe it as a very beautiful, peaceful state to be in. So then why do they come back to life? And who decides that they can come back to life? Karma. It's a karma which decides. Whenever a soul exits from this realm, it doesn't even feel this realm is bad. No. Oh, it's good. It, you had a good time. <laughs> See, people like horror movies, don't they? <laughs> you don't say only I like comedy movies. No, you like tragedy movies. Thrillers also. You like horror films also. Like that, people say, oh, it was good. Because, you know, it has not affected you a bit. Nothing could take away your sheen and shine. So, when you are total, when you are intact and when you are invincible, you won't mind. It's like taking mud bath. You know, when people take mud bath, it looks so horrible. <laughs> but if you think you are going to be like that all the time, or your skin has become mud, you would sit and cry, you know, it's just a mud bath. And for a while you soak in sunlight and then you go back and take a bath. How do you feel? You feel good. It's in the same way, in whatever role we had to play, we assumed, we chose, you know, that was good. <laughs> that is why there is an eternal peace, a peace that cannot be destroyed. Shashwat Shantim Nigachati. Lord Krishna says, one who comes to me, they attain such a permanent peace that nobody can shake it. <laughs>